I'm uh, Lawrence Lost Hui, and I am the AD carry for the academy team for Echo Fox. I was born in the small country of New Zealand, and that's a country that's basically right off the southeast side of Australia. It's a very peaceful country, actually. It's really small, but I think a lot of people have the idea that since it's so small, you know, it's like just sheep and farms and whatnot, and not much goes on there. It's actually a really, really nice city if you live in Auckland, which is where I was staying or growing up for most of my life. It's a pretty big city for the most part, and it's very populated. I do miss New Zealand a lot because, you know, it's just such a nice place and weather is always super nice. Probably doesn't sound good, but it really is such a like, beautiful, peaceful place. I had divorced parents. Starting from a very young age, I kind of got used to being more accompanied with my older sister. So me and her were really, really close growing up, and we still are. And she was actually the person who got me into League. I had played Dota before, which is another MOBA. Very, very similar to League, but uh, she was like, hey, this game's a new thing. And I'm like, nah, probably isn't. And my sister was like, no, 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 you should try it. And ever since then, I would played it like exclusively instead of Dota, so. Leading into my esports career, my support for it from my parents' side wasn't I wasn't the greatest, but my sister, uh, my older sister was like, you know, do whatever makes you happy and I'm fully supportive of your decision to, you know, pursue esports as a career. But I don't think my parents were very, um, were very supportive of it at first. I remember for years and years and years in my high school days where I would play a lot, a lot of league, like an unhealthy amount of league, my parents would almost routinely tell me to go to sleep early or play this league, which is what a parent should do, <laughs> for the most part. They were very, very uh, harsh on that, or strict on that. They would always, always tell me, even at like dinner tables, or like I would ever go out to lunch with them, or you know, literally just sit on the couch and watch TV with my family. They'll tell me that I should play this league, or just be on the computer less in general, and um, study harder, <laughs> or uh, do more practice in terms of sport. So getting support for moving to Australia in the first place, and living with four other guys who play video games who are far off my age. These guys are like 20 or something, or 19 or 21 or 22, even like older, right? Into a completely new industry, and I just came straight out of high school, so. For any parent, I think, you know, it's fair enough to be like, yo, that's, that's, not, that's not a good idea and that's not safe. The only logical decision for them would be to tell me to keep pursuing school, so. That's what they did. And it took me maybe a split or two to uh, get them fully on board with uh, esports and whatnot. And a lot of convincing from my sister. My sister actually helped me a lot with convincing my parents to pursue this kind of career. That was mostly how my life was in relation to esports. And here I am now. Uh, King's gonna take quite a bit of damage here as they go for the engagement. Shernfire is here as well. Exhaust onto Lost. He's gonna get taken down really low. He's able to hop, skip, and jump away. There's the culling, and Shernfire gets taken down. The drive by comes out of Lost. The 3v2 for the Legacy bottom lane, and they absolutely style on the Dire Wolves. Because of the split I had played before, I got picked up on another team called Legacy. That was when I had to move into the gaming house and all that shenanigans, you know. Long story short, throughout the off season, moved from New Zealand to Australia, and it was in Sydney. And Sydney's a pretty, pretty nice place. It was culture shock because, surely enough, people are very different in Australia than they are in New Zealand. Obviously, playing in pro league is stressful, especially when you're not coming first all the time. I think we came second and third in the first and second split, which is pretty decent showings, I would say. Because they're going in, Cupcake's on top of him, Exhaust has gone down, but Nexus has gone! Wave. Shockwave on Ryoma! He is still gonna pick up kills! The Nexus, it's so low! They, they get, get it. it! Legacy have done it! They're going into the Grand Finals against the Dire Wolves! I definitely wouldn't say I was comfy. <laughs> I had to work pretty hard and mature a lot in a short amount of time. But I've grown more from that experience, so I'm glad I have. Karma's been locked down. They find Fantix though. They knock him away. Redemption comes out. Lost has flushed over the wall. He gets the first kill. King's gonna fall next for the double. And slowly the base of the Diewolves is being ripped apart. Does he get the triple? Yes, he does. Quadra coming out. If he can take down Chippies as well. That's a big tree to cut down. But Legacy are much stronger with bigger roots than the Diewolves. I'm glad I went through that to be more of a you know, self-sufficient individual, so it wasn't a bad start, that's for sure. Enero from 
his current team, Golden Guardians. Now, um, he was actually on Tainted Minds. We had a pretty good relationship for the most part. And randomly, when the second split, second split had ended, he had joined Echo Fox, I think. He wanted to host a boot camp, you know, just for players who had like not already been in Pro League to, you know, show what they're worth. Almost like a very, very mini scouting grounds, which is kind of cool. And some other coaches or players from other organizations had come and watched, I believe, in the first and second boot camp. And I was invited to the second boot camp along with my teammate, Tally Weka. His name is James. And I performed pretty well in the boot camp. Well enough to land myself a spot on the academy roster for the first split. I'm really, really, really grateful for uh, Nero for giving me the opportunity to even come here in the first place and to you know prove something, right? Really, all I am now when it comes to the US and you know all I have in America, all my teammates and all the splits I've got to play first in LCS and in academy and now again. It's all thanks to Nero for giving me the chance and I'm so so infinitely grateful towards him for giving me that opportunity in the first place. Echo Fox made the biggest moves of the split. Huge roster changes for them of course right before the roster deadline. Dropped several players in the roster but most notably that man on your screen Smoothie is wearing white, orange and blue. Suddenly he is here, and of course, alongside Academy bot laner Lost in this bottom lane. Yeah, and Lost, an import from OCE, so uh, kind of a cool moment for, for them and for their scene and for him as well uh, to have made it all the way up to the NALCS and uh, to be a strong performer from that region. Uh, moving up to LCS was, for the most part, unexpected because I do take up an import slot, and being given a chance like that isn't likely, I would was. I think most people would say that. And LCS isn't like something to laugh at. It's a pretty big league, right? And what a debut it was for Smoothie and Lost, performing so well in that bot lane 2v2, taking down the turret, looking great in the team fights. And Echo Fox putting on one of their most impressive games of the split. Yeah. It was a lot of pressure. And consistently playing on stage in front of an audience. That was really, really fun, but at the same time, it's a lot of pressure. But I remember it being a very, very humbling time because there would be fan meets after the matches and on the games we won, and even on the games we lost, people would come up to us and support us. It was just really sweet to see that, like, you know, just for myself, right? Because in the past, you like, maybe if you're playing an Academy or Challenger series, you know, not that many people watch. You don't really get to see, like, the larger scope of how many people actually play the game and are passionate about esports because you haven't really like made it yet to like where people can watch you play because you're not at that level yet. And seeing that firsthand in LCS was just really humbling and it made me want to be like way more hardworking because so many people care. You just want to make your fans happy. And I remember that being really special is talking to fans and having supportive messages from them. I definitely am more motivated to try and reach LCS because that is the end goal is to play in LCS and win LCS or for the most part get more experience in it. And this split, third, fourth place finish, considering how we started this season off, which was two and five, pretty good result. <laughs> pretty good result when you look at it from that kind of perspective. But um, I wouldn't say I'm very happy with the result. I would like to have no regrets with my esports career and so far I definitely don't. I've had so many good experiences with it and I don't plan on stopping it. So I'm gonna do my very, very best to try and make it to LCS again. That's just how I feel about it. Maybe I'm too hard on myself and I should lay back more and be like, yeah, it has been a pretty good run and so far I should do my best moving forward. I do feel like that, but I just, uh, I'm more like hyper-focused on wanting to do better for the future because there's always more I can do. So that's just how I think about things.